Hi, it's uh, Jason at the Centre for Companion History, uh, yet again, and um, this is the uh, the Dragon Beta 128, and um, that's the information panel, but this is the actual machine. Um, pretty sexy, right? Um, this is only the board, unfortunately. Uh, there is another one, apparently, uh, which you're going to hear about in a minute, um, but this has been beautifully presented uh, under some uh, Perspex sheets, so you can see exactly um, what... Uh, the Dragon Beta 128 consisted of um, and I'm here with Rich Harding say hi, hi. Rich hello um, and uh, he is the guy that has made this happen and, uh, and created a display for us so can you tell us about it please um, this is the Dragon Beta as it was named in development um, but it was also in the public name the Dragon 128 okay. um, the unusual thing was though that actually when we first got it we actually realised it's not 128 this one's 256 so 128 in being the, the RAM that it has, but actually yeah, it's got 256k of RAM. Yeah, that's we, a beast. so we, we don't know if it was, they were going to like half populate it and send it as yeah. 128 and 256. Later on. We just don't know, but it came right. as 256. Um, so that's it. Fantastic. So you've made this uh, case. Can we take the, the lid off so we yeah, haven't got the reflection from the lights yeah, there? No problem, yeah. But yeah, better look. Beautifully presented. Um, there you go, Dragon Beta 128. There you go. Boom. Right. So there it is. So what do we think the uh, the one two eight was going to be then? What was it for? It, How does it relate to the normal Dragon Thirty Two? There, there's no relation directly in in its line of use. Right. It was completely aimed at the business market. Oh, okay. Um, we say with you know for two fifty six, it had twin six eight online processors. There was talk of hard drive. Expansion up to 768k. It came with twin floppy drives, so when you got it, as you can see in the in the reveal we had earlier, mm. it's got twin full height Sony three and a half. They're only 180k, but they're first generation. Mm -hmm. So, but there was also talk of actually terminals and etc. running off it. So, it really was aimed at small businesses and maybe even further. Right. So we've got the um, the Dragon Professionals. They were business machines as well. They're still yeah. there, over there. So this was really yeah. aimed at the professional. So really small business, single use. Right. And th this was obviously it's running at twice the speed. It's got twin processor, so it's more power, has the ability. It runs OS nine, which is Unix, very Unix like. Mm -hmm. So even though that runs US OS nine, there was talk of actually having terminals off this. Right. So okay. there was a lot more functionality in it. It had better graphics. There was a light pen interface. There. Oh, oh wow! So that is actually that's a, is that a photo transistor at the end? Yeah. There? So that is actually for taking huh. a direct light feed off the thing, right off the screen. That's unique. I don't think I've seen that anywhere else. No, I don't think I've I've seen it elsewhere either. You usually have the photo transistor actually in the pen, and then you've got the yeah. the, the cables coming back from it, but yeah. not to have it. So you'd have a kind of a light pipe connected yeah. to. Oh, interesting. We we don't Weird. have a light pen. There's no software to drive it, unfortunately. But right. it was there, and that's what was intended. Yeah. So over here, it looks like that's the RAM there. Yeah. Um, so assumingly, uh, sort of two banks of 128 there. Um, and we've got... So this has got two 6809s. Is that yeah. them over here? There's um, the primary 6809, which actually runs the main code right. to actually run all your programs. Uh -huh. And then there's a secondary 609, which is... IO, which is some, it runs in, when the 6809 main processor is not using the bus, the second processor sort of takes over to do IO. Right. So they're running in, it's some form of basic DMA. Yeah. So they're sort of interleaved in how they manage the system, how they interact with the system. Mm -hmm. So it, it is a lot faster than it first implies, because any IO it can just hand off. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. So actually in IO being things like serial and that kind of stuff, you would probably need to be, if you'd hung a few terminals off it, yeah. then you're not going to want to load we, the 6809 with all we that. We haven't dug into the code right. to see what is really there right. that hard. But, but we've got images of the ROMs, right? We do have images of <laughs> ROMs. We have, uh, and thanks to Duncan Smead, who used to uh, work at Dragon Data, we uh -huh. have a set of disks to actually boot OS 9 oh, right. for it. So wow. it is actually... Um, when I got the unit... It was in a poor state. It had been in, stored in somebody's attic for about 20 years. Right. Um, and it wasn't looked after. It had been boxed up carefully. Yeah. And there was rust on chips. It was in pretty poor state. 
I started looking at it, and I'd probably say out of the first few chips I looked at, half of them were faulty. Right. So this board was fully stripped bare and rebuilt again using mostly new components. Every single component? Every single component. The, the board wow. is in such a state, I, I, even though the few small ICs I replaced, uh -huh. I couldn't solder it because the board is in such yeah. a state. Right. So I, I took the decision, madly or, or, or <laughs> sanely, that I would strip everything off and start with a clean slate. Yeah. So most of the components here aren't from the original machine. Right. But in, in aims of preserving it, every single component was put in a bag and labelled. Right. So it could be put back yeah? okay. as, as it was when it, it was put it back in its original it, it was a case order. of it was a th what use of it if it doesn't work yeah so th th I took the decision of I'd rather have it working than not so working just a dead so board, just a dead yeah. board. Okay. so I wanted to bring life into it really and you know sort of there's you know sort of thing. thanks to uh, Phil another dragon enthusiast who's, who's helped me on this project quite a lot and also John Robinson, who used to work for Dragon Data. Mm -hmm. He's helped me supply, he supplied me two brand new disk drives from Dragon Data that right. were for this machine. So, yeah, and, and hopefully in the near future, it, it did languish in a box for a few years, but now I've got it out, maybe there's a bit more temptation to get it working again. Yeah, it, so it, it, it did how far do you think you are with that? How close? It has booted. Right, we have had it working, it right. has booted OS 9, we have had it up and running, loading programs. Absolutely brilliant. But not for, not for a while. I, I right. Know. Okay, that's fantastic. So yeah, so the so have you reblown the uh, the ROM over there? That's a new yeah, one. Yeah, that's the reblown. That's is that the, original or? No, that's the, that's an original character ROM. Right. Yeah. That is original. Um, mm -hmm. So if you look at some of the chips with the Tipex and stuff on, they are original. Oh, okay, right. Because yeah. they, they were PALs, which are programmable logic yeah. arrays, which are difficult to reproduce. Well, yep. they can be reduced, but you can't buy them off the shelf. No. They have to be programmed. They go buy them and program them. Yeah. 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 Every component that you see on the board. Is as close as I could get it to his original that was actually on the board when I got it. Um, even to the point of they've used oversized resistors, like one watt, half watt. Right. I put exactly the same resistor back in. <laughs> so I, I, I tried to restore it semi-synthetically yeah. to how it was when I, when, I, when I got it, but into a working condition. Absolutely fantastic. Well, congratulations on that. You've done a brilliant job. Um, and there's only two of these, do we think? There's... Two confirmed, maybe a third. Okay. We don't know who's got... John Robinson, who's hiding out in Australia. If you see this, please get hold of me again. Yeah, absolutely. There's so much work we could do with getting the, uh, all the uh, circuit diagrams all scanned in, all that sort of work. Mm -hmm. John, if you hear me. There was one in Cardiff. I don't know who's got that. And then there's this one, which is just a bare board. The rumour is that this beta board was picked up by uh, Brian Moore, the MD on his last day at Dragon Data. As he was leaving out the door, he saw it and rescued it. <laughs> that's the rumor, whether it's true, I don't know, but yeah, it was owned by the MD for nice, a Nice, I think while. that's true, fantastic. Right, so that's, that's incredible. So these are very, very rare indeed. And, um, and we're lucky to have them here at the, the museum today. So um, thank you very much for your time and congratulations on, uh, on your work. That's absolutely sterling, no problem. Thank sterling you. work there and uh, fantastic piece of preservation. Okay, so um, that's uh, Jason at the Centre for Computing History. Thanks for watching, and uh, if you like the uh, videos we're doing, please do subscribe.